Hi everyone, I'm Sharon and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'll be creating a slimline card featuring a fun summer beach scene with two critter friends. So without any further ado, let's get started with a quick overview of the Lawn Fawn products that I will be using to create this card. Most of my images and sentiments for this card come from the On the Beach stamp set. Look at that little bear and fox with all of their fun beach accessories. Lawn Fawn just makes the cutest images. I use the rooftop from the Spring House add-on die set, and all of the other die cuts are from the Beach House add-on die set. I use the large sun and the ampersand symbol from the All the Clouds stamp set. As well, I use the Palm Trees die set and the stitched hillside borders for the sandy beach. I use the cloudy stencil to create both the clouds and the ocean waves. Here's a three and a half by eight and a half inch slimline card front panel cut from some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. And here are all of the die cut pieces I need to build my summer beach house. When I was brainstorming the design of my beach house, I remembered a lawn fawn video by Maureen Simon, where she layered her rooftops and created a wooden looking beach house. I thought that Maureen's idea looked really cool. So I decided that I wanted to create a similar wooden beach house with a layered rooftop too. So I'm using some mustard seed distress oxide here and a blending brush to ink blend three rooftops. One, I ink blend fully, and the other two, I just ink blend the bottom. Then I use my Tim Holtz paper trimmer and I cut about 20 little strips of cardstock each measuring about a quarter inch to two and a quarter inches long. And then the natural imperfections of the wood grain texture, I tried to recreate that by blending some ground espresso distress oxide onto each strip. There's no rhyme or reason to my ink blending, I just want to achieve an uneven look. I use some tape runner to cover the cardstock for the beach house panel, which measures three by three and a quarter inches. And then I start to piece together the thin little strips of cardstock. I do it in a staggered way so that it simulates the look of hardwood flooring. This was actually a lot of fun. It was like putting together a really easy puzzle together. Then I just cut off the excess strips of the cardstock with a pair of shears. And here's my wooden beach house. I decide to go with a blue door, which I think stands out really well against the wood. Earlier, I forgot to ink blend this little piece that goes behind the window frame. So I bring the mustard seed distress oxide back out because I want the color to match the rooftop. I think there's something really complimentary about the combination of yellow, blue, and brown. These colors give off a really beachy vibe of fun in the sun, water, and sand. I attach the boy to the door. And then using my jewel picker tool, I pick up and attach this tiny knob handle die cut and I attach it to the door. The anchor, I'm going to sit on the ground 
and I'm just going to lean it up against the side of the house. Now I can work on the rooftops. Off screen, I used a bone folder to reinforce the creases along the score lines imprinted by the die. To give the roof shingles the illusion of depth and dimension, I use foam tape on the scallop edge side and flat double-sided tape for the straight edge. I offset the way that I adhere the roof tops to create the impression of a triangular or gable rooftop. Okay, so now the palm leaves and the blades of grass, I want to give those some shadow and dimension as well. So I lightly and unevenly blend on some rustic wilderness distress oxide. Then I take my Lawn Fawn chamois and a dry cloth and I clean off my craft mat. And then I do the same uneven ink blending on the log and tree trunks with some ground espresso distress oxide. Now I use my Lawn Fawn glue tube and some crafting tweezers to assemble the two coconut palm trees and the little seagull friend that comes with the beach house add-on die set. My Lawn Fawn Cloudy Stencil measures six inches wide, but my card panel is eight and a half inches wide, but I can still make this work. I'm just carefully matching up the sizes of the cloud puffs as I move my way across this eight and a half inch panel. My goal is to create a seamless look, and you'll notice that I'm constantly turning my stencil around to find the best fit. For the blue cloudy sky, I've decided to use some tumbled glass distress oxide. Notice that I'm going to use the same cloudy stencil in a two for one kind of way to create both the clouds and the ocean waves. To create the ocean waves, I just shift the stencil down and I ink blend from below the stencil's edge. I'm using Mermaid Lagoon Distress Oxide for this water and I'm trying to create some contrast against the tumbled glass blue sky. My ink blending isn't perfect, but I don't think it has to be because the waves of water are uneven and they're constantly moving. I'm just careful to match the sizes of the waves with the different sizes of the puffs from the stencil. To create some texture and interest in the cloudy sky, I smush some Mermaid Lagoon Distress Oxide onto my work surface. I spray a little bit of water and use a small paintbrush to create some little splatters across the sky. I don't own the slimline stitched hillside borders, so to create my sandy beach, I had to be a little resourceful and play around a little bit to butt up two of the six inch stitched hillside borders together to create a seamless eight and a half inch border. Then I used some antique linen oxide, distress oxide, to create the look of sand. And I used some ground espresso distress oxide to create some contrast and depth along the edge. I've loaded all of my images onto my Misty stamping tool and I ink them up using some Lawn Fawn Jet Black Premium ink 
which are alcohol marker friendly. I re-ink and stamp the images three times to get a really good impression. Off screen, I color the images with my Ohuhu alcohol brush markers. And now I'm going to take some low tack washi tape to position the dies over the images. And then I will run everything through my die cutting machine. And look, I just love how adorable these lawn fawn images look. They just look so cute. For the sentiment, I'm going to stamp out have a happy and relaxing birthday. The sentiment comes from the On the Beach stamp set. I want the sentiment to come out crisp and clear, so I use some VersaFine Onyx Black ink, which is really great for stamping out fine details. Now for the fun of assembling the card. First I use my tape runner to hear the sandy beach, and then I add the beach house with my lawn fawn glue tube. I tuck the larger of the two palm trees behind the beach house. So it looks like it's far back in the distance. And then before gluing down anything else, I want to lay out all of my images to ensure the perfect placement. So the fox and bear critters have just finished up the game of beach volleyball and now they are relaxing under the shade of this big umbrella and the fox is enjoying a cold coconut beverage. Isn't this scene just adorable? I'm going to put the smaller palm tree in the background to create some depth perception, like it's far off in the distance. And all of the images that are further back in the distance are glue, will be glued down first with some liquid glue. And the images that are closest to the foreground, like the umbrella, the sunscreen, the seagull, those will be popped up using some foam tape so they appear as though they are in the foreground of the scene. For the final touches, I use a black glaze pen to give the critter's eye some dimension and shine, and then I use a white gel pen to highlight the rest of the images. Now I flip my card over and I will use my shears to cut off the excess edges of the images. I like having some of the images go off the panel because I feel like it suggests to the eye that there's more fun to be had in the scene and that it goes beyond the borders of the card. I have a seven by eight and a half inch piece of accent opaque 120 pound cardstock that I'm scoring down the middle at the seven inches at 3.5 to create the card base for my slimline card. Now I take some liquid glue to adhere the card front to the card base. And here is my finished summer beach birthday card. I really like the way that this card turned out and I think that this is a great card. It's just perfect for a friend who has a summertime birthday. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I hope that you will join me again next time. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.